Mental health disorders. What I found surprising versus not surprising. So the first three things that I found surprising in this chapter. One was schizophrenia affects 1% of the population. I feel like it's become more common that my patients have a history of schizophrenia nowadays. So I'm curious to see how these numbers have changed and will continue to change in the upcoming years. Second, 55% of ages 12 and older have used prescription drugs for non-medicinal problems, and they usually obtain these from their friends or family. This is over half of individuals that are over the age of 12, which I find pretty concerning, and my sister's 14, so it was very eye-opening to me. And lastly, uh, a recent estimate showed that 22.6 million people used illicit drugs, and 17.6 million people experience alcohol abuse or dependency, uh, these numbers are extremely high, and I think it shows that um, some more supportive measures should be taken for this field. Some things I found not so surprising is that stress can be a contributing factor to the onset of mental illness. Uh, I had previously known this, but I also think that that has become more clear with the pandemic in the past year. That has been a very stressful time, and there's definitely been more diagnoses and um, more concerns with mental health that have developed. Second, approximately 40% of all traffic related deaths are related to alcohol use abuse, which I personally thought this number would be even a little higher. I feel like when I drive down the road, the billboards typically show very high numbers and statistics with that. So 40% kind of seemed low. Um, and lastly, marijuana is the most commonly used illicit drug. This was not too surprising to me because multiple states are starting to legalize this drug and it's very easy to grow and for individuals to gain their own access. Mental disorders. Some information I learned. Uh, first was the onset of schizophrenia, typically is 15 to 25 years old in men and 25 to 35 years old in women. When I was obtaining my psychology degree during my undergraduate program, uh, we learned that schizophrenia cannot be diagnosed until after the age of 18 and the average onset for all individuals was 27. So I think it's pretty interesting how numbers have changed in time and even to the extent that men could be diagnosed as early as 15. Second, uh, I had not previously known that individuals with panic disorders often have uh, multiple biochemical abnormalities. This could be neuroepinephrine, serotonin, or GABA. And lastly, um, I knew that selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, also known as SSRIs, were often used to treat depression, but I had not known that the benefit of these drugs includes having a less risk for, or a risk for fewer cardiovascular side effects due to the fact that the drug blocks neuroepinephrine uptake, which I found very interesting. Substance abuse disorders. Information I learned. One, alcohol is most commonly the drug used in combination with other drugs that lead to synergistic reaction resulting in an overdose. So typically when someone overdoses, it's not just meth, it's not just Xanax. It's a combination typically of one along with alcohol. Two, methadone is a synthetic opioid that prevents withdrawal symptoms improves function and lessens cravings for narcotics, often used for heroin addicts, and disulfiram is a deterrent to alcohol use that is taken on a daily basis and causes unpleasant reactions such as severe headache, vomiting, difficulty breathing, and visual problems when the patient ingests even a small amount of alcohol. I think these medications are great for the withdrawal process and eventually can wean the individuals off completely. And third, I had previously known that alcohol definitely affected the liver. I know that if you have enough alcohol, you can have spouts of forgetting or unconsciousness. So this kind of made sense to link it all together, but alcohol is a hepatotoxin, meaning it affects the liver, that causes metabolic changes in the liver cells, leading to lipid accumulation, inflammation, and necrosis, and finally fibrosis and scar tissue. So individuals with chronic alcoholism can also have serious nerve damage in the brain 
due to neurotoxicity and malnutrition. So some future implementations uh, for my future field. So my intentions are to work with children in the future as a psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner. With that being said, it is important for me to make note that children and adolescents are at an increased risk for suicide when taking antidepressant medications without concurrent psychiatric counseling. So I'll be sure to make sure that these children stay on track with their counseling. And if they do not, I need to reconsider the medications they're being prescribed. It'll also be important for me to educate parents and children to monitor these changes um, while taking the medication. Second, uh, individuals diagnosed with schizophrenia are given first generation and second generation antipsychotics to help with their disorder. It's important to note that the side effects and long lasting effects with these medications uh, should be taken with precaution. First generation side effects include tardive dyskinesia, extrapyramidal activity, and dystonia, while second generation side effects include blurred vision and dry mouth. Providing education to my patients will be key there. Next is children are born to parents or children born to parents who drug abuse with a higher, have a higher risk of being drug abusers. Analyzing the past and where kids come from will be important to understand some of their decisions and concerns. It'll also be important to provide education and check patients for cross-contamination and street drugs. I don't wanna take just a drug test focused on is this person taking or have THC in their system? Do they have just um, opioids in their system? It's important to do a broad test. Oftentimes people on the street will dilute and contaminate their drugs to increase profits and or to make the substance more marketable on the street. So you wanna know everything they're taking and what they can possibly be withdrawing from or what could have possibly affected them. Educational measures are not always effective for children since peer pressure and curiosity is still a factor that remains a problem for these individuals. So I can provide education, but I still need to run on the side of caution that they might still feel peer pressure and understand the background of their situation. And lastly, it's important to make note of the general indications of substance abuse which include changes in behavior, appearance, personality, daily living patterns, or work habits. In adolescence, you might see changes in friends, academic achievement, interest in sports, or increase in risk-taking behaviors. You may notice that an individual becomes more defensive, angry, or embarrassed behaviors as well. So noticing these may raise some more caution or concern to consider with my patients. Here's my reference. Thank you.